Welcome back to another Maya tutorial. This time we're in Maya 2017 and we're going to take a look at creating a spiral staircase. So that means we explore something called Duplicate Special. Now to begin with, you can see I've already started modelling my, my staircase here. I've got my centre post that the staircase will spiral around and I have my step and I've got a post here for my handrail to sit on. So just before we get too much into this, you can see I've set my menu set to modeling and my shelf is on polygons. And to make it easier for you to see what's going on, I'm gonna to go to shading and then wireframe on shaded. Just so you can see everything here without me having to select them. Our center post has to be in the middle of the grid, otherwise it won't work. So if you haven't done this before, you need to select your object, go over to your channel box, and you can either click on this tab on the right hand side, or I've got highlighted in blue here, the shortcut to open your channel box. With your object selected, make sure you've got a zero on translate X and translate Z. Translate Y is just the vertical position, so that doesn't matter too much, but X and Z have to have a zero. It's gotta be in the center of this grid. I'm going to give this a bit more height, so I'm going to right click, go to vertex, I'll select the whole top of our object here and I'm just going to zoom out and give that a lot more height. We can adjust it later on if we need to. And then I'll right click and go back to object mode. Now I just want to show you how to title these up, so if we go to windows, outliner, you can see all the different assets of your scene. If you haven't seen the outliner before, you've got your default cameras, and then you've got all of your models or your objects you've created, and then we've got our default light set and some different shader groups down here. We can explore these later on. But to begin with, you can see I've titled these accordingly to what they are. Just think logically about what your parts of your model actually are. Now we can select everything except the center post, basically every part that we want to duplicate around this. So I'm going to select all of these parts here because we want a number of steps. And we need to put these into a group. If you're new to grouping, I just want to show you how to reset your group settings to make sure it works properly. So go to edit click on the option box next to group and then just go to edit and reset settings and then when we group these and by the way the shortcut to group is command G if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC control and then G by resetting the settings it makes sure our pivot point goes to the very center of the grid and if you go to any tool you'll see your pivot point is in the middle. If it's not, you can move it manually by holding D and you can move this into the center but it's got to be really accurate. Alternatively, if you've already grouped and your pivot point is somewhere in the middle over here, the middle of your object, you can ungroup by going to edit, ungroup and then like I showed you a few seconds ago, you can reset your group settings and then group again. You'll also notice now in the outliner, you've got a group one. And if I expand that group by clicking on the plus to the left of it, you can still select your individual objects. So even though these are in a group, they're still independent objects. You can adjust them, you can texture them later on, you can do all sorts of things. And if you want to select the group, a classic mistake people make is they highlight the objects again but that doesn't select the group you have to actually click on the group in the outliner okay I'm just going to minimize that group and I'm going to retitle that by double clicking and let's just call that step one the next stage is just to select the group and if you have a look at your channel box you'll see all of your attributes here are zeros, everything except scale. 
So translate and rotate are all zeros. That's because it's a new group and it's reset all of these attributes for us. We can now duplicate manually this group and position it for our second step. So select your step one group, duplicate, which is command D if you're on a Mac or control D if you're on a PC. And you'll see it actually titles our second group step two. It goes up in numerical order. And our step two group, we want to move that up and then we want to rotate around the Y axis. And for a spiral staircase, it's really important just to move it up and then rotate around the Y axis. Don't move it in any other direction. We don't want to translate X or Z. We can easily check by having a look at our channel box and make sure you've only got a number here on translate Y and rotate Y. Your translate X should be zero, translate Z should be zero, and your rotate X and rotate Z should also be zero. Now what we can do is select our step two group, go up to edit, click on the option box next to duplicate special and reset these settings. Edit, reset settings. And if we have a look here, we've got some boxes. We've got translate and there's three different boxes. That's X, Y and Z in alphabetical order and then rotate X, Y and Z, also scale X, Y and Z. And we just need to copy the information from our channel box for our step two group into our duplicate special options. So my translate Y is 0.658. So let's type that in. We've got translate X on the left, Y in the middle, and then Z at the end. So my translate Y, 0 0.658. And then my rotate Y, this one here is 13.103. Your numbers will most definitely be different. Whatever they are, just make sure you've typed these in accurately. And remember these boxes are X on the left, Y in the middle, and Z on the right. Now we can choose how many steps we want. So let's go for about 30. It's easier to make too many and then delete some rather than have to make a few and then a few more and then even more. Now we can go to apply and let's just close that and you'll see you should have a fairly basic spiral staircase. If anything's gone wrong just go back a few steps, rewind the video and check you reset all of those settings Check you've actually put the numbers in the correct boxes in your duplicate special options and it should work. If we now have a look at our outliner, you can see it's duplicated all of these groups and it's titled the stairs for us. And just to neaten this up, I'm going to select all of my step groups, everything except the centre post, and I'm going to group those into a new group. So command G on a Mac or control G on a PC. And I'm just going to title this stairs. We can always expand that and you've got your stair groups or your step groups and you can always expand those further if you want to. Now a couple of things we need to do. Check the height of your center post. If it's too short, we can resize that just by right clicking, perhaps go to vertex mode, and you could select the top, and with your move tool, you could reposition the height of that. So let's just move that up a bit more to about there, and then right click and back to object mode. Last thing to do is put the handrail in, and we can do that by using a polygon helix. So you'll see it's not on the shelf. But we've got some more polygon primitives if you go up to create polygon primitives and there's a few more on here. So I'm going to go to helix. 
and you'll find with the helix there's four stages to create that. The first is to click and drag to set the overall width. The second is to click and drag to set the height. The third is click and drag to set how many coils. And the last is click and drag and you've got the overall radius of your helix. Doesn't matter how you create it for now because we can adjust that. So I'm going to put that in the center of my grid. I'm just going to move my outliner down and out of the way for now. Put it in the center of the grid by going to the channel box and we're going to put a zero on translate X and translate Z. And we can start adjusting that now. So I'm going to move that up to the middle of my staircase. And now if I scroll down in the channel box, just below where it says inputs and then polyhelix one, click on it if it's not expanded these options. We can now adjust the number of coils, the heights, the width and the radius if we need to. To begin with, I'm just gonna click on the word height and then middle click somewhere on my perspective view and drag left to right to readjust the height. And I'm just gonna do a bit of guesswork now. I'm gonna try and get the height as close as I can. Maybe move it up a bit more. And then I'm gonna look at the number of coils. So click on the word coils, middle click, and drag left to right to try and get that as close as you can. So you can see now, my handrail starts roughly on the first step. Let's have a look at the very top. It's a little bit too long, so maybe I'll decrease the number of coils here. So again, click on the word coils, middle click, and just drag left to right. So I'll leave it about, about there for now. We can always trim this later if we need to. That's about right. We can delete these faces if we need to. Let's have a look at the width, because at the moment it's going somewhere in the middle of these stairs. So click on the word width, middle click, and then drag left to right until it's roughly wide enough. Now we can position the height a bit more. So we need to make this a bit taller. So back to height, click on the word, middle click, and let's just try and get that as close as we can. And then move that up so it's sitting on top of each of these posts. Okay, it does take a bit of trial and error to get it right. We can now rotate the whole thing around if we need to, just to make sure the beginning's in the right place. It looks about there. I need to bring the whole thing down a bit. You can see it just moved up a bit too far. So back to the move tool, bring that down a bit. And let's just check the rest. That looks okay to me. So now we can just trim the top of this. I'll right click, go onto face mode. And I'm just gonna highlight all of those faces and just backspace to delete them. Then if you want to, you could select all of these edges and you could extrude this and make like a fancy spiral end if you want or we could just fill that in by right clicking go to edge and we need to select all of these edges around the end here or double click on one and it should select all of those go to extrude and if I go to scale and start to scale that in it starts to fill that in and you'll see it will always leave a small gap. We don't want to overlap or anything like that. Leave a slight gap and then go to Edit Mesh, Merge to Center. Okay, so that's it. It does take a bit of practice to get used to, but Duplicate Special is such a powerful tool if you can get used to it. You can use it for all sorts of things. Just give it a try. Remember to reset your duplicate special settings okay that part again is just edit and then the option box next to duplicate special 
Also keep things organized in your outliner. If you haven't yet titled them, title each part. You can see I've still got to title my handrail here. You can retitle or move these around if you need to later on, but just try to keep it organized.